So we are going to look into crucial role of early AAC intervention. We all know AAC is important, but how early, why early? That is what we are going to look into and in what way it is going to enhance developmental outcomes. So it is not just communication, overall development, how it is going to help. That is what this presentation is about. So let me say my disclosures. I have no financial or affiliation affiliations with Avas or any other AAC manufacturers. I'm not receiving any fee for this talk. It's a free talk, awareness talk from Avas. I'm a I'm part of it. My talk is a part of my effort to build awareness in the professional and parent community about creating inclusive spaces. So this talk is open for pediatricians, for parents, for therapists, uh, all type of therapists, speech therapists, occupational therapists, special educator. Now we know like, okay, therapists, they are working with the child. Why this session is addressed to pediatrician, uh, young developmental pediatrician who is doing fellowship, uh, pediatricians, pediatric neurologist. Why? Because as physicians, we are the first point of contact. So the parent is going to come to us and we are the ones who is going to refer them like, OK, go for speech therapy. At the same time, if we are aware about AAC, it is it is better that we can give them more information. Second, in early intervention, it is not just one person's job. We can think like, okay, communication is a speech therapist's job. So it is not a one person job. Currently, early intervention is looked as it's child centric and it is a collaborative team model. So everyone have their role. So parents also have an equal role because it's a child centric, family centric approach. So everyone are one of the stakeholders. So pediatricians, therapists, parents, everyone being a part of the session is very important. And communication is one of the area which helps in overall child development. So if a child doesn't have adequate communication, the cognitive development depends upon the communication of the child. Social development depends upon the communication of the child. The child's um, uh, mental well-being, the child's um, self, how the child is going to see themselves, the self-confidence, all depends on the communication. So the overall child development depends upon the communication and AAC addressing the communication, it becomes very important for the pediatricians to know why AAC is important because if the therapist say, if a speech therapist say to the a parent also, they are going to come and check with their pediatrician, their first contact, who referred them to a developmental pediatrician. So this becomes very important for pediatricians and physicians to know why it is important. So what is the importance of communication? So uh, there is a statement from uh, Daniel Webster. If all my positions were taken away from me, with one exception, I would choose to keep the power of communication for by it, I would soon regain all the rest. So that important is communication. I also stated if communication is there, then the child's cognitive development would be better. Social development would be better. The child's mental well-being is better. So that is the importance of communication. And it's a basic human right to express our needs. We need communication. To express our feelings, we need communication. To participate in community, we need communication. If there's a pain, uh, if there is going to be some safety issue, we need communication. So communication is a basic human right. Just because someone is not able to talk, that doesn't mean that they have nothing to say. So everyone, communication is a very, very important thing. And one good thing, uh, what happened here was when I said like, please express why do we need communication? What is the importance of communication? I used one way of uh, expressing it. I used my speech. You people used your way of expression of typing or writing, written mode of communication. So when it comes to communication, it is not that everyone is expressing it in speech. Always, as human beings, we tend to communicate in multimodal way. So we might communicate through gestures. There are sometimes like we don't talk at all. In uh, human communication, 40% is uh, through speech, 60% is through body language and expressions. So we express multimodally. We type, we write. So these are 
different ways we communicate but when it comes to kids with uh, neurodiversity somehow we tend to go into the normal way we start fixating on speech so let's look into what is the difference between speech and language speech is the sound which i produce is a speech but what is language it is a process through which i communicate my ideas thought my physical needs to an other person and the receiver understands it i can do it in any ways for a small baby it can be in the form of crying it is pre intentional the child is not using a gesture the child is just crying it might be eye gazing looking at something and the child is crying and as a child grows it becomes like okay the child starts using gestures the child starts pointing the child starts using give gesture come gesture then the child start making sounds and the sounds becomes more meaningful then we call it as okay the child is producing uh, vocalization sounds it is babbling cooing then it becomes like uh, word approximation then it becomes words then it becomes uh, phrases and sentences then it becomes to and fro communication and uh, simultaneously the child also learn to write and the child starts communicating in the form of writing and typing also so that is a difference between speech and language language is a purpose through which i express my ideas thoughts and physical needs speech is just one mode to do it and as human beings we all are multimodal communicators it's not that we use only speech we use multimodal communication now how is speech developed in neurotypicals in a normal human being how it is developed and it is one of the gifted thing of human being like we have this speech other animals make sounds but it is not in a very structured way so it is a most complex human motor act we can also say it is a most complex human human motor act so how does it develop in the first 10 months it is more of motor development the child develop very fast in his, his or her motor development so the around 10 months the child also learn like their their manipulation skills becomes better so they understands uh, that okay if my parent is showing me banging the drum the child understands that okay i can also do the same action on the toy that we call it as object based imitation that comes around 10 months 8 to 10 months and then the child starts doing gross motor imitation like if the parent is clapping hands the child tends to imitate that then the child also learns like bye bye like social gestures the child does a lot of gross motor imitation and once the child becomes comfortable in it simultaneously the child can start doing fine motor imitation till one year it is only the parent who is pointing and showing to the child like hey look there look here now the child understands like hey if i want something specific i can also start doing like them i can also start showing my fingers so around one year the child understands that they can start doing small movements of their hands initially it was like big joint movements like arms legs now it becomes like small finger movements they become more comfortable and similarly at the same time around 10 to 12 months 10 to 15 months the child also understand like hey why only uh big motor muscles i can also move my oro motor muscles i can start chewing different food items i can drink from a glass i can uh, start sipping from my uh, sipper i can do my oral motor uh, related imitation also if you are doing boo i can also do boo if you are putting your tongue out i can also do that that the child achieves this once the child achieves all these motor movements then the child becomes very comfortable in moving their lips in their tongue in a coordinated way in moving their vocal cords and that comes in the form of verbal imitation so around uh, 12 or 10 to 18 months the child becomes more and more comfortable in repeating the speech sounds also so for the speech sound to imitation to occur the child has to start the practice as early from their motor development from their 6 months of age so it's a very complex process and 
once they can do verbal imitation gradually they start speaking one words then it becomes like uh, two words then it becomes like a sentence and the pragmatics of the sentence becomes more and more complex they start adding more and more vocabulary adjective prepositions then it becomes like i the child starts expressing their uh, needs for different function i don't want this protest they start communicating so speech is not very simple though it comes to us very easily it's a free gift from the god that we all get it we think it is easy but it's a very very complex human motor act so why some kids are not developing speech it could be when i explained that Uh, there is a lot of motor muscles which is involved even in speech there is speech related muscles which are involved so the child might have issues in speech or motor control that is uh, motor planning issues so that the child is not able to move their lips tongues in a particular planned way that the sound production is not happening or the child can have some pragmatic issues the child can make some sounds that is uh, minimally verbal children they can make word approximation words or when when a parent model or when a therapist model a sound they are able to repeat that word but they are not able to form their own structure of the sentence so that could be a pragmatic issue in autism spectrum the issue is in the form of joint attention they are not paying attention and as a result communication is not developing and another thing is also they can have associated uh, apraxia the or the speech motor control issues which is all causing a problem why speech is not being developed is it only that it is also another component because in speech therapy if a child is taken to the speech related issues the speech therapist will be focusing on this but associated with that there is also few reasons which causes lack of speech that is lack of motivation if i need to reach something and if it is very difficult for me to produce it in the form of speech and i just reach it or i just i guess it and i'm able to get it then i won't be really reinforced to put that much of dif difficulties to produce a speech sound second thing is lack of motivation every time i fail again and again that i am not able to communicate over time the motivation goes off so both the components play a role it is one is cognition or the motor planning difficulties another one is a behavioral component also both together lead to lack of speech so if we are going to address only speech in the form of like okay i want my child to produce speech or i am taking uh, for regular speech therapies i am giving oral placement therapy i am i am uh, giving massages you are working on the cognitive and motor planning part or if your child says minimally verbal your child has one word you are modeling and the child is trying to repeat like an echoic speech the child is doing but we are not working on the behavioral component at all the child's motivation is going low and low the child doesn't feel reinforced by producing by communicating if we are not addressing this part then in a long run it will end up in failure so there comes in ac this we will look in detail in future slides so now the question is who needs ac children and adults with complex communication needs it could be non verbal or minimally speaking asd uh, individuals non verbal at least 10 10 to 15 percentage of asd kids are non verbal at least 10 percentage of asd kids are minimally speaking kids minimally speaking means they have around 5 to 20 words mostly nouns not more than that so they might be able to express few of their needs but not all of their needs second who needs ac it is they have unclear speech like when i said about motor planning difficulties apraxia dysarthria like their movement of the jaw all that is a problem they they have unclear speech they are producing speech sounds but the other person is not understanding might be the closest to family members are understanding to an extent but the other person are not understanding even in autism spectrum disorder at least 20 percentage of autism kids though they produce sounds they might have associated apraxia or they might have issues with the pace of speech they might speak 
very uh, fast that the other people outsiders they are not understanding the next person who needs ac is kids with kids and adults with cerebral palsy because of their motor uh, issues the speech related muscles are also not being able to use as a result they are they need ac for communication cognitive impairments uh, children with intellectual disability the most common causes down syndrome the other genetic causes developmental delays they also need ac and it can be acquired causes where uh, there is a childhood stroke or there is a traumatic brain injury after a fall there is a, a huge bleed in the brain that might also result in lack of communication so any child or adult who is not able to express themselves verbally their needs wants desires thoughts feelings ideas they need ac so what are the types of ac one is unaided that is gestures through gestures children are communicating or the sign language so uh, many of the kids are exposed to sign language what is the disadvantage of this see as a neurotypical person not every neurotypical person no sign language so even if the child comes and communicates in sign language people in the community people in the uh, extended family might not understand what the child is communicating so the sign language though the child puts an effort to learn the child is not uh, reaping the benefit of it the next uh, type of ac is aided but it is low tech you are using some uh, devices the devices is in the form of object so the real object itself for example the child wants a biscuit the biscuit cover itself is taken some um, it is filled with a foam and stapled and that is used in a board so that the child can start communicating through the object board or it can be in the form of pictures so what is the disadvantage of this low tech thing see you can't uh, keep on uh, making objects for your feelings you can't make objects for your thoughts you the variety the child gets in an object board communication is very limited in pictures if a book has to be made with all the pics the child can't carry it everywhere it would be huge so the usage of it for low tech devices becomes need based communication then comes the aided or high tech uh, solutions those are speech generation device so it is all app based avas is one of the speech based uh, high tech uh, speech generation device high tech aided ac so uh, this is a object board in low tech in avas itself there is an option of taking a print out you can take a print out and you can uh, laminate it and you can use it as a low tech ac device uh, just remember this in future i would be addressing this though low tech ac devices has a dis disadvantage of it can stick on to need based communication alone other uh, uh, functions of communications will not be addressed and how much size if you communicate everything through pictures the size of the book would be humongous but from avas itself or from your speech generation device itself if you are taking a print out and using a low tech ac in some places it is advantageous now the question is age of introducing ac because the topic itself is uh, what is the criticality of introducing ac in early intervention at what age can ac be introduced ac can be introduced as early as 18 months so why do i say that it can be introduced as early as 18 months in a communication if if so you think like an 18 months old child if a child wants some needs the child is crying and the child is leading the caregiver to the kitchen and looking at wherever the biscuit box is if the child wants some food the child is looking at the biscuit box or if it is reachable the child is trying to reach that means the child knows like hey this is a place things are there if a child is able to communicate that way as early as 18 months the child knows many parents who comes to me they say like hey my child knows where objects where things are they might climb the chair and they might try to take my child will look at it that means that the child can communicate their needs in their own way that is when ac can be introduced 
as early as 18 months it can be introduced now the question is should we introduce only at 18 months no if you have missed it any age it can be introduced so the answer of any age it can be introduced is correct but if you introduce early training the child is also easier and it gives in a lot of advantage to the child so in houses when we keep things we tend to keep it in the same place so it becomes easy for the child to eye gaze at it so similarly in aac the position of the pictures is going to be in the same place and if you customize it that way it becomes easy for the child to go to the same place out of motor memory the child can go to the same place so it doesn't require cognition in the chart i read like the child should be cognitively ready no it's not needed the child should know the position if i need chips every time it will be in this place the child is going to go and touch it so as early as 18 months aac can be introduced now the question is okay if we are not introducing what is the impact on overall development the child some children can eye gaze some children can gesture when something is in front of the eyes some children minimally verbal children can speak then if it is not their house they won't be able to communicate that results in they are not being understood only the parents know if they are crying this way might be they are crying for hunger if they are crying this way might be they are crying for discomfort but other person will not be able to understand the child the child's preferences will be taken for granted okay might be you are crying today also you want the same biscuit might be the child wants different preferences even the parents might start taking child's preferences for granted might be today the child went to restaurant usually the child orders dosa but today the child see someone else eating puri might be the child wants puri but the parent thinks like hey every time you eat dosa only i'll order dosa for you dosa is your favorite if you have looked into us itself the thing is our preferences changes over time sometimes if a child is not communicative we are guessing this is what the child needs so all these results in frustration in the child tantrums in the child or it might be like a behavior the child in the hotel wants to eat puri might be start taking from the other's plate we say like behave properly hands quiet all that we start saying it is all resulting from the child is not able to communicate what they want to communicate social interaction becomes an issue See, it might be in the form of not interacting with the peers alone it might be in the form of taking to social places because every time they are not able to communicate over time they understood like okay my form of communication is crying throwing a tantrum and every time if a child cries through a tantrum it becomes difficult for the parents also to take to public places so the opportunity the child is getting for social participation interaction becomes less and less now a child who is not able to communicate start showing it in the form of behaviors not that they are willing to show behaviors their way of communication itself has become behaviors then if the child has to get admission in school if the child has to go uh, to different places the parent wants to control this behaviors then it results in take to doctors uh, doctor he is trying to uh, take from other plate he is very hyperactive he is restless in a place then the the developmental pediatrician or pediatric neurologist starts thinking from a perspective of is it adhd is a child restless hyperactive no the child is not able to communicate the child is trying to show that like i don't like this place the child is not able to say the child shows in the form of restlessness running out of the place the child is anxious about the new situation the child wants to say no the child shows it in the form of pushing things then unwanted medications get keep on adding to the child the child goes in for behavior therapy but the actual problem is communication the communication is not been addressed and if it is not addressed earlier the child learns it as a habit like a hey, my form of communication is behavior sometimes this communication would be understood only by the caregivers so the child becomes dependent on the caregivers that only if the caregivers are there they can understand me if it is some new person new teacher new relative the child can't adjust and stay with them and if a person is not able to communicate themselves and if the child doesn't have adequate social uh, interaction and if communication is not there 
developing cognition also becomes difficult see for to understand road based things i don't need communication if the child has to uh, show uh, alphabets numbers or uh, anything which is concrete it is easier but after a certain point of time the child need to understand question comprehend and answer if the child doesn't have communication it is difficult to make the child understand concepts they can't even if they know they can't express those concepts so there is an impairment in cognitive acquisition so if the cognitive development is not happening and that the child is not able to communicate the child is socially isolated there's a lot of boredom and the child exhibits boredom also in the form of behaviors so what which started as communication failure not able to express and in all these years in all these uh, phases it is not that the child is not going to therapy every day the therapist is putting an effort parent is putting an effort child is putting an effort on developing on speech speech production the child is regular to therapy but for some children and when i said the data at least 25% of the children in autism spectrum and at least 20% of the children in intellectual dis disability at least 30% of children in cerebral palsy they won't be able to produce speech and as a result how much of a therapy they take it is going to end up in communication itself is going to become like a behavior so there is over treatment with medication cognitive development doesn't happen adequately boredom and as a result the child doesn't if a child has lot of behaviors the child get very limited participation can't go to social places can't participate in function can't go to school because a child would be considered like you are not talking i'm not sure whether you understand you are not able to express what you understood as a concept so the child gets limited participation limited opportunities as a result as they grow up also they are going to get limited job opportunities or vocational opportunities and the child's self confidence self esteem is going to be low so ultimately the child will not be able to achieve their full potential so what we think as communication what we think as speech and we are putting as parents you are putting an effort as therapist if we are if they are going to put effort only on speech production but not on multimodal communication the overall development of the child itself will start falling down so with this i am going into the recent research study we know that okay aac is important as early as 18 months it can be introduced so we don't have adequate research studies in india even in western countries is aac a part of early intervention or not so this question is was put forth to 325 speech language pathologist and some were open ended questions some were uh, choices they were given to them and certain questions were asked i'm just sharing the results so speech language pathologist who is expert in uh, helping the child to develop communication they were asked like which type of children you introduce aac whether it is going to be a high low tech aac or high tech aac so mostly it was like children with no language they were introduced aac earlier than children with minimal language those children who have around 20 meaningful words who can mostly it's nouns one word communication and when the uh, speech therapists were asked they said like hey it can be introduced for uh, any type of uh, kids cognitive development is not important it is uh, only the child's uh, language delay is important chronological age as early as 18 months it can be introduced but when we asked the question was asked it has been introduced only by 3 to 4 years of age even in western countries and sometimes when it has been introduced when there are limited success from other approaches the child has tried uh, slp the child has tried opt the child has tried pex if it is not working as a final option like so many failures now i am giving this it has been introduced at a later age none of the therapist or very limited amount of therapist less than 10 percentage of therapist took frustration the child being frustrated as one of the reason because if you look at frustration even by 
two years of age, the child starts showing frustration if they are not able to communicate. But we look at it as behaviors. But the child is showing the frustration because the child is not able to communicate. Now, when this question was asked, okay, you all know that the benefit of AAC, but why it has not been introduced? One is when when it was like minimal language children, why it has not been introduced? The therapist feels hopeful that if language modeling is done, if expanding of language is done, the child will acquire speech better. And in parents' acceptability also, if it is a no language child, they are okay with sign language because they feel it is temporary. Okay, for some time, my child will use sign language and automatically my child will talk. But if a AAC device is introduced, it becomes permanent. So the parent acceptability itself is less when it is going to be AAC. And another thing is carryover across providers. Only with speech therapists they are using, but not in multiple setting. So the AAC is not giving the results. So ultimately, the parents are also getting uh, frustrated. And the child also shows their frustration in other areas where the communication device is not produces, produ uh, when communication device is not given to the child. The frustration is shown in other areas and that leads to failure. Another barrier is parent being trained to guide the child because they are going to be with the child for a lot of time. So they need to be motivated. They need to be trained to deliver it to the child and perceived lack of time. Sometimes parents feel like it's difficult. We don't have that adequate time during the therapy. You do it. But outside the therapy setting, we don't have that much of time. So. Even in a Western country, though we know it can be introduced as early as 18 months, the age which is being introduced is three to four months. So the, now the recent recommendation from Asha is AAC is a part of early intervention. If the child is going for speech therapy, occupational therapy, and if the child doesn't have any language as early as 18 months to two years, it's not like after failing all the options, wait till five years, then give AAC, it's not that. Along with all early intervention, AAC is also a part of it that has been told as a recommendation. A few of the topping we have discussed, now we know why AAC is important, why communication is important. If communication is not given to the child and waited for speech model base of communication, we know like what all developmental issues is happening to the child, but what is stopping us? As a professional, what is stopping us? As a parent, what is stopping us? We are going to look into the fears. One of the fear which we already discussed is AAC stops the child from talking. If AAC is introduced as early as two years, rather than a sign language, if a device is introduced, my child will not talk at all. My child will continuously communicate only through that iPad or only through the phone, through the device. Is it true? No. As I said, if a child has an issue in cognitive and motor planning, they are not able to use their muscles to produce sounds or they are not able to put words together to form a structure. If it is being addressed through speech therapy, yes, it's well and good. But what happens to the motivation of the child? If every time the child is failing or if the child is forced to repeat a sound, that decreases motivation of the child. So if we introduce AAC, it increases the motivation of the child to communicate. The child is very happy to communicate and as the child communicates and if the child gets the ability, the child starts talking also. So AAC doesn't stop the child from talking. Though the therapist knows it, the speech therapist, the problem is if the parent has that fear and parent is one of the important stakeholder in taking the decision, that puts a stop for the therapist also. Now for the parent, it also comes from, hey, haven't I tried enough? Without trying enough, am I giving this device to my child? The parents start seeing themselves as failure. Hey, if I model more, might be I am not modeling enough. Might be I am not spending time enough with my child so that only my child is not developing the speech production. So as I discussed earlier, some of the developmental condition, neurodevelopmental disorders like cerebral palsy, intellectual disability, autism spectrum disorder, at least 20 to 30 percentage of children, how much ever effort you put, they can't develop 
communication through speech they can develop communication but speech production is a problem for them so if parent feels like i have not tried enough that is stopping them to parents it's like you are trying enough as you are trying as you are addressing this cognition and the motor planning issues simultaneously if you introduce the aac it is going to fasten the process your child will be happy to communicate through a device because they got an accommodation at the same time they will be more motivated to learn sometimes it becomes like let's wait because even in the research it is told like hey child is speaking some words if we continue stimulating the child the child will start speaking words a clarity to an extent it has improved compared to 6 months back now the clarity has improved a little bit so we will keep aac as a last resort sometimes therapist also says that so what i would suggest to parents and therapist and also to doctors pediatrician is there is no wait and watch like how early diagnosis is important like any child who has a delay we are not going to wait and watch similarly for aac also it is not the last resort it's not wait and watch at least by 2 years aac has to be introduced along with that continue with your speech therapy continue with your uh, uh, other therapies also so always combination helps and if you are doing a combination the child's motivation to talk will be more and the percentage of children who has after introduction of aac they have talked more better than children who has not been given any opportunity for communication second fear is i am not tech savvy it is a fear of a parent sometimes speech therapists are uh, they know a lot about these aacs other therapist teachers school teachers they feel like oh my god my way of communication is talking this child comes with a device it's fear of trying new so for any person if so i have to learn i am a tamilian when i came to karnataka if i have to learn kannada first i have to speak i have to speak in kannada people have to speak to me in kannada i have to reply back in kannada then only i can learn kannada so to teach to teach french you have to speak french to teach spanish you have to speak spanish to teach sign language you have to speak sign language to teach aac all the caregivers or all the stakeholders should speak ac so if the fear comes as i am not tech savvy then say to yourself it's a new thing see any new language when we are trying we have bit shy we are bit confused is it a correct word is it a correct way of doing so everyone will have the fear if it is going to be parent if it is going to be teachers that little fear is going to be there it's okay we can do a mistake and next time we can learn it better and it is a different see our easiest way is talking and we have been practicing this from our 18 months of age now all of a sudden you have to have a device and you have to point in the device some important words and talk it is something different so it's going to be difficult just because it's difficult don't lose your motivation if you continue doing it you can do it and there's a lot of training opportunity even avas have their rm rm course many speech therapist conduct courses other therapist teachers can also join these course so it's just training and anything when we try something new there is a little bit of anxiety hormones which is produced in us that is a good anxiety so overcome it then it becomes easier the next thing is my child is very young so already we looked into uh, we can introduce by 18 months but if it is not introduced by 18 months can i wait till 3 years can i try all the therapies then can i introduce as i told earlier if your child knows that oh these dabbas are kept my favorite uh, toy is kept here your child can go to that place your child need not identify pictures your child need not identify objects it is basically motor memory through motor memory the child starts understanding okay the uh, popcorn is in the, is in the right side corner so once a child knows like popcorn the child can again and again go there so very young is not an question at all now it is old some some uh, adolescents adults they might be 8 year old they might be 15 year old they might be 25 year old they might be non speaking or minimally speaking even for them 
it can be introduced the only thing is if you are introducing at a later age it is never late than never not late than never you can introduce but out of habit they have their usual way might be their usual way is taking your hand there might be their usual way is eye gazing now if you are introducing a new habit you are going to respect their usual way you are going to say yes i understood it's not that you show in avas or you show in speech generation device then only i will give no i understood that you are asking that but can you be more clear in that way it can be introduced at any age also if the fear is going to be very young i haven't tried enough my child doesn't know to identify pictures that is not a stoppage for using aac uh in few parents and even in few developmental pediatrician and therapists there is a thing like let the child first start identifying picture let the child have a cognitive ability of matching an object to a picture let's build that skill and once that skill comes then we will introduce the high tech device till then we will use a low tech device see it is not necessary that the child has to shift from a low tech device to high tech device but what i would say is for a parent if so you feel like all of a sudden should i invest in this uh, uh, in avas if that is a question then what i would say is to improve your motivation to improve your child's motivation as a temporary mean you can start using this communication low tech communication object based communication you feel like oh my child is able to communicate better if if a child wants something my child is picking up a spoon and giving then try to put pictures underneath if a child starts communicating immediately within a month shift to a high tech device so it's a temporary mean it doesn't mean the child has to become an expert in a low tech device has to use a lot to use a high tech device because in a low tech the opportunity of participation which it can provide is very limited but in a high tech device the opportunity is more so there isn't any need that the child should have a cognitive development of matching object to picture or the child should identify a picture so that only i can introduce avas now the next fear the parents most usually they say is Uh, doctor ipad is a costly device how can i take it to the park if my child drop it down if he is swinging if i am taking in an auto i am so scared it is a moving thing in that if he takes and if he drops it down my child has some behaviors he might throw it down when he is angry or upset or it is a our usual way of communicating neurotypical is talking but for a um, neurodiverse you are parenting the neurodiverse and you have to carry the dif- uh, device everywhere it is difficult i accept it it is a practice out of practice it will come and second thing is motivation so in this you can think about think that if you are using the device only during speech therapy twice a week for 30 minutes then the child will take 84 years to learn to communicate through avas because in a normal development by 18 months a baby have started practicing babbling the spoken language 4380 hours and still we say like 18 months old baby will not talk we will wait for 2 years to talk but if we are introducing avas and we are saying like only during speech therapy weekly twice i give for 30 to 45 minutes then you have to wait for 84 years if your fear is the device is costly i can't take it everywhere or i forget to take it everywhere the easiest solution is i told you from the avas itself you can take a print out you can laminate and you can use it as a low tech alternative it is not a solution you are using as an alternative if you are going to travel in auto to a park or you can take a print out personalize it and take it over there if a child is showing an option or you are modeling an option you can produce that speech sound for the child but it is just a temporary alternative and similarly if you don't remember i would say like in kitchen what are your favorite child snacks that personalized folder take a print out and put it might be in activity during play which room you play there you can put it near to the door you can put it like okay these are the common uh, outings we do so put it for a month's time 
start modeling for the child you will start seeing within 3 months itself the child starts communicating along with you that is a time immediately shift to a high tech device so the low tech alternative is not a permanent solution it is basically wherever you feel like uh, i have put a sturdy cover but still i am scared you can have a low tech alternative you are difficult to remember you want to improve your motivation oh my god my child is capable of communicating this much so the problem is for you to remember for your practice you can use a low tech alternative as parents but not it is a permanent solution so if we use it as a permanent solution more than 3 months then the child's vocabulary will not increase the child will take more long years then the purpose of aac itself is lost sometimes it is stigma one of the parents shared that see we went to a restaurant my child tries to communicate through it it produce a a uh, mechanical voice and i got the attention of all the people so stigma yes i accept like still awareness is not very, very huge in uh, bangalore is different compared to a smaller town in karnataka they might not know stigma is there but how can we overcome that by creating awareness by creating inclusion hey this is a way proudly saying like this is a way my child will communicate this is a actual incident shared by a parent the child takes aac to the school and um, the other children were asking like why is he why is he not talking why is he using a phone to communicate why he can't talk so the mother was explaining to other children like this is how he communicates he likes to communicate through it so one of the child wants a child to come for park so he said come let's go to the park and this child the peer itself pointed to the child like, show here you want park you want slide or you want this so if the parent adult caregiver is going to model the society is going to accept the society is as a professional as a parent if we have a fear of trying something new trying something different from the usual thing then a person who is not aware of this it's a confusion if a, if a person is communicating through a device see when we are talking we know that i have to look at you when someone is talking through a device when they are talking through a device where should that person look look at his face or look at the device how much time to wait in a normal conversation i finish talking and immediately the brain process it very fast but by the time they are typing the other person has to wait these are some of the practical difficulties the other person in the society doesn't know this and because of that there are some difficulty it doesn't mean that when we say to the society when we ask for the society for inclusion inclusion will be available now another fear for a parent is using of more fringe words this has been addressed in the first session itself using fringe words is more of nouns okay you learn uh, different uh, food items different uh, play items but not much of core words so you learn to request first then i will introduce other things or it is like imperative language you say me what is this uh, say that uh, i want biscuit so if an ac device is used only for requesting first or imperative then the language development doesn't happen the parent or other therapist and um, the teachers and the special educators have to learn it needs practice we need to talk but only important words have to be highlighted that and it has to have lot of core words 70 percentage core words and 30 percentage only fringe words for example now we have different functions of communication request is only one of the mode but the other mode we use communication for greeting people we use communication for describing if we have uh, if we have gone outside we will say like it was so beautiful it was hot outside we use communication for protesting rejecting i don't like this i don't want this so no agree disagree we ask question hey what did you do there why why i should do this express feeling i like i am happy i am excited i am upset i am disappointed instruct others share information and comment so there are multiple functions of communication if ac is used only for requesting then 
the child's progress would be slower so i am giving an example so uh, i am a parent professional i have my daughter is semi verbal so earlier i have used avas for her so when we are cooking she enjoys cooking so different things parents have to model there it is like uh, while we are doing it for example diwali is coming so i took this example if we are mixing uh, the dough with water and we are pouring we can say like mix pour and we are rolling the dough roll try so as we are saying it it's not only the word i am mixing and you are going to press the word mix can we roll it now shall we make, make a big roll big ball rolling it and we are going to press roll so it is a practice of pressing the device and at the same time talking as neurotypical since we are not used to it parents will have this difficulty but if you practice it becomes easier and if you are using ac only for requesting give gulo gulab jamun more gulab jamun then it is not going to work it can be used for improving the receptive language also as we just take it oh it's so oily oil can be it's it's i think i wonder it's going to be spicy or sweet a gulab jamun is a sweet it's sweet ah good smell so good has to be pressed oh it's hot not touching no touching so we can press hot and no as we are going through it we are going also going to say the navigation to the child so the child we can also ask questions what's happening while we are saying what's happening we are pressing what and we are saying frying fry so if the child is ready uh, just eagerly waiting oh you are wondering when it will be ready five more minutes so we can press five uh, five and also when in questions we go to questions we press when if while the sugar syrup is on it's boiling oh why bubbles it's boiling so this is how parent have to practice modeling it is not like one function give gulab jamun more gulab jamun if you are going to use only for requesting it is not going to work so there are in the avas uh, uh, website itself there are some videos there's a beautiful video for laundry uh, being modeled by uh, speech language ther uh, therapist tayan tara that can also be looked into as you observe many videos and as you practice it the fear of requesting first let me do requesting first then go to other things will go it just needs more practice and sometimes parents tend to over personalize it so my child can't see big pictures even uh, if matching if i give eight pictures my child can't match so let me keep only two pictures so the grid size if you are going to keep small it is not going to work because the concept of aac itself it's positional the child understands through position with two pictures you teach and now if you make it four you make it eight it doesn't work so these trainings you will get from the therapist so if you do some practice and learn to personalize it and personalize it correctly then it becomes easier we can overcome this fears so what are the additional benefits is it used only for communication no so what are the other benefits literacy we can read story books with this we can read uh, teach uh, typing with this we can teach spelling for the child with this so literacy once if a child has a communication device the teacher the special educator the other class children everyone becomes comfortable and feels like oh this child is capable of learning the child is communicating whatever he knows might be the concept of more or less numbers is introduced and the child is communicating through in his turn or her turn more then the other children becomes comfortable and this child becomes more confident so literacy can be taught through ac behavior management so if the child is upset this can be created as a folder so from the feelings folder you can go uh, to the behavior management folder so where the child is saying like if uh, the child is seeing biting fingers the parent or the therapist is saying like oh i see you biting fingers so you are feeling angry then going to the coping strategies so through coping the child can be taught like okay you can um, squeeze your hand you can squeeze the ball you can ask for break so a uh, behavior management can be modeled through a device and gradually that becomes a self regulation for the child 
and we can also this is uh, my personal thing uh, with my daughter might be when she was 8 year old we have played antakshari she can't sing she can only say the songs so different songs were been put and in my voice it has been recorded as a folder and we finish it with uh, we finish a song and we say like okay it stopped in na sing a song with na and she has to select it and my, in my voice the song would be sung and when it stops the other person takes it so the child can participate in games uh, we have played i spy game so initially she can she had words she had phrases she can use noun and verb combination adjectives she could not use it fluently so i spy game we have played with avas where she has to go to describe folder and she used to choose from that it can be used for playing games also and uh, one more thing which can be used is for life skills so for cooking independently i want to show this video that is another added benefit so yeah, uh, the child is um, independently making her milk so in the device uh, she has lot of cooking recipes so what are the ingredients which is needed and she knows the ingredients sometimes she doesn't mix it well so she is making her own milk and she is drinking so how avas can be used for that this is an additional benefit <laughs> So over here, it is an independent skill. What the child is doing, there is an ingredient, and there is also executive function. Like she has to mix it nicely so that all the sugar and things get mixed. So there is also counting there where it has been recorded. Like counting of ten, the child has to do. So it helps in independence. Uh, there is also another folder. Like if you had heard, there would be like yoga. There is a yoga folder. so different yogasanas has been put and each yogasana's name and a count of 20 would come where she has to uh, play it and she has to do it independently so through avas you can also it is an additional benefit communication is a main purpose but you can also help with executive functioning so with this i am completing my talk right to communicate what they want when they want wherever they want whomever they want to say is a uh, need of the child is a right of the child so as early as possible if we introduce the complications where the child not able to communicate because of that whatever is being developed all that can be stopped we have certain fears we have certain practical difficulties but that can be addressed easily and for that i shared some of from my experience also thank you uh, so uh, sarmishta says i am a bit apprehensive with the idea of having to expose him to the screen after huge struggle i got rid of screen time my question is while using avas app are there any chances of revival of screen time and subsequent behavior getting impacted in some way Cli kindly clarify on how to deal with this my child is 6 years old partially verbal okay so while you are introducing avas in the device don't have other uh, games you don't have uh, youtube and all that that i would recommend so that the child doesn't go as they are using avas they are not using a separate device for this a separate device for that uh, second thing is this is not considered screen time because it is interactive intentional communication so this is not considered as screen time at all so don't fear that if i introduce avas he will remember about screen this is something like it's a new like a book you are introducing a new thing and you are doing so it will not increase his screen time um <clears throat> priyanka says kindly share some ideas how to motivate parents to introduce aac for their child as early as possible okay see one thing is um, you can share research article saying that uh, it is not that uh, you have to wait you if you wait till the failure and if you are introducing the possibility is less it's basically awareness creation of awareness and multiple people it is not only the speech language therapist responsibility it becomes a pediatrician responsibility developmental pediatrician responsibility neurologist responsibilities to reassure parents so and another thing is if you are a slp 
in your uh, session you can start showing the parents see i am introducing your child is communicating the behaviors are less if we generalize it everywhere it's going to work better that is also one of the way of uh, doing it it's basically awareness and modeling in your session i was maintaining consistency for my 18 year old teenager who has introduced who was introduced avas to some months ago he has adhd and does not seem to take any interest in avas okay see in uh, when we are introducing to adult you have to put a little more consistency because they have a usual way of uh, communicating they are going to go to their usual way adhd doesn't stops the child from using avas that has been proven and generally if a child gets a communication opportunity the child will be more focused in the device because they feel like oh, i'm able to communicate my need so it is basically patience for 17 years he had been used to one way of communication respect that but at the same time you take it and you start modeling when he goes and he uses usual way of taking a thing you are going to say yes i understand you want uh, uh, this you want it to be spicy so you are taking uh, chili flakes let's see want chili flakes you are going to model it gradually once he is okay you are going to say like it hey, can we also show it in avas i understood it can we also show it in avas so for older children more persistent more respectful we are not going to behave like i didn't understand what you said now i want you to show it then the behaviors will increase more uh, priya says can you please share your personal experience about aac okay see uh, my daughter is semi verbal so i have used aac not for the purpose of communication if so for literacy little bit we have used we have uh, used a little bit uh, for other purpose like improving executive functioning making her more independent uh, for her it is like anything which is visible became easy for her to talk the description was very difficult for her because it is not it was visible but she was not able to get it so i have used in bits and pieces in uh, ac and it's extremely useful the thing is initially for me to use i had to become more familiar with it i had to become more comfortable with it and it has to become like like how i am talking i have to use my hands also for talking when i become comfortable the child also becomes comfortable so uh, now my ch child can uh, she is 14 year old she can talk adjectives so currently we are not using avas for the purpose of description but we have avas still in literacy we have avas in behavior management there are situations when she becomes extremely upset though she knows emotional words she won't be able to express so still i am modeling like i understand you are doing this you are feeling this from here we go to behavior management and we model so in that way it is working see when i am talking itself i am saying b v v it's not like she 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 because that's how aac work it's a parent and the child combination if it's going to be you want the child to do it you have to become more consistent you have to become more fluent in using it initially it is very difficult because that's not our way of speaking but as you practice it see for example initially i would plan where it is like okay i'm going to do this activity how i am going to talk what are the words i am going to model first i will list it down then i would do that with my child so that becomes easier a little bit of practice then you will become fluent uh bunny says how to use avas app to express feelings mainly when he was angry uh how to know what is the reason for his anger okay so initially you might not know the answer if you know then guess it you are going whatever you are seeing in the child you are going to say i see you this you are angry i am wondering can this be a possibility whenever you are thinking like i'm wondering this be a possibility you can model that and you can go to behavior management and you can say like okay let's take a deep breath and then we do it and one more about the same thing can you explain more about behavior management sidra mazar okay uh, the first thing is there is an emotion folder in avas so in the emotion folder whatever the child is uh, doing it is not only for anger so don't use only for negative emotion even for positive emotion you are going out and the child is excited model it hey you are you are jumping around your hands and legs are so happy so i think you are excited so you are going to model it and sometimes your child is over excited you can also say like from the emotion folder you will be going to the there itself there will be a link you will go to your behavior management folder and say like hey can we sit down squeeze our hands so there is when you are saying sit down you will press sit squeeze you are going to press squeeze 
and this is some calming mechanism might be in the folder itself if you if you have a count you can record your voice with that count so that's how you will use so you need help you can talk with your speech therapist where from the emotion some behavior management strategies so um, i think you would be introduced to zone of regulation by any of your therapist so it is a green zone green zone means the child is calm so while you are putting the behavior management strategies also you can put with the color code so sometimes i use like okay you are in orange <clears throat> if you have to go to green these are some things which you have to do so in avas you have the color coding also so you can use a little bit of color code the color code is mainly used for different vocabularies uh, verbs will be in different color preposition will be in different color but for behavior management i have used this color code also thank you once again and uh, yeah. thank you great... so much thanks for the opportunity bye we can